This time on Monkey Life. Baby Bulu needs a mum, but will Shao Kwai step up to the mark? You are conditioned to leave other people's babies alone. It can be really dangerous. Exciting news for Woolly Monkey Zingu. We've finally got our baby that we've been waiting for a very long time. And flirty Scarlet uses all her charms to try to woo boss Erico. Monkey World in Dorset, buried deep in the English countryside, is the largest sanctuary of its kind on the planet. The team, led by Dr. Alison Cronin, rescues and rehabilitates abused and unwanted primates from all over the world. This is no done deal. I don't know if he's going to make it or not. The park provides a home for more than 240 monkeys and apes from 21 different species. At the Orang Nursery, all eyes are on Xiao Kwai. Today, she'll be meeting a new baby Orang who's just arrived from Budapest Zoo. The team are keeping their fingers crossed that her maternal instincts will kick in and she'll take him under her wing. Bulu Mata is only three months old. His mum tragically died a few days after he was born and he's had to be hand-reared ever since. Yesterday, he and his keepers made the long journey from Hungary to Dorset because they believe Monkey World is the best place for him. The park has the European crash for orphaned orangutans and the staff have years of experience in looking after babies. Xiao Kwai, for her part, is very experienced at bringing up youngsters. She has two children of her own, Kai and Jin. And she stepped into the breach when Awan's mum rejected her at birth and has taken on the little girl as her own. So the team are hoping she'll take a shine to Bulu too. Another point in her favour is that she's still feeding Awan, so she may have enough milk to give Bulu. But it's all guesswork. We'll give it a go. It's the first day, you know, and he's travelled a long way and everybody's a little bit tired, but sometimes you're better taking advantage of the disarray and the confusion and, oh, I'm being scooped up by a new mother orangutan. And let's see how we go. Bulu has arrived at the nursery with his carer, Bernadette. She takes him straight over to Xiao Kwai so that they can meet each other through the mesh. She does reach out to touch his little fingers. So far, so good. Bulu also gets the chance to say hello to Oshin and Sylvester while he's there. Xiao Kuai and Awan, who still spends a lot of time with her adoptive mum, watch with interest as Bulu is placed in the bedroom opposite them. The moment of truth. The team are all hoping Xiao Kuai will bundle the vulnerable little orang into her arms. As soon as the slide between the bedrooms is opened, she heads straight in to see him. Bulu is squeaking because he wants to be cuddled. Xiao Kuai hovers at the entrance, but keeps her distance. She's worried she'll be separated from the others in the nursery, so heads back. Animal manager Jeremy comforts the little orang. So we bit the bullet. Ideal solution would have been for her to just swing into the room, scoop the baby up, hold him to her breast, and everything's done. But, you know, that's not what happened. Things are going to take a little bit of time, and that's OK, too. We've got all of the time in the world. Jeremy doesn't want to lose the momentum, so takes Bulu back over to Xiao Kwai. But he understands her reaction. You are conditioned to leave other people's babies alone. There is an instinct that says, do not mess with other people's babies. It can be really dangerous. You know, mum might have just 
put it down for a minute and she might be back. And incurring the wrath of a mother by messing about with this baby is, is not a good idea. So what Chow Kwai did was, was good, was OK. We'll just give her some time. The team decides to make up a bed for Bulu in the tunnel between the two bedrooms, so he can be close to the others, and Xiao Kwai can come over when she feels ready. The orangs watch on, fascinated. Bulu looks a little bewildered, but has calmed down and is ready for a nap. Everything can happen in time. Slow is better than fast. We'll take our time, so no problem. And we're ready and geared up to be caring for the baby until Xiao Kwai is prepared to take over. As Bulu nods off, Xiao Kwai can't resist popping in to have a peek. She looks tempted, but only time will tell whether she's prepared to take him on. Bulu is just one of many recent arrivals at the park. Four more new monkeys look like they've been given a new lease of life. Little Red and her daughter Bassett were rehomed from a pub in Cheshire, along with two male marmosets called Brass and Evie. The landlord of the pub was moving out and couldn't take them with him. He wanted them to live in a more natural environment. At first, all four were kept together as a family unit, but once the group were given more space, the two boys started competing for Little Red's affections. So it was decided to move the two girls in with a male common marmoset called Rattler. Brass and Evie, whose species are unknown, were left together. And they seem much more settled. They're loving the freedom of their new enclosure. It's really good because it's got natural plants such as budvia which attract insects, which makes up part of their diet. It's got quite a lot of foliage in as well because they don't want to be stared at by the public. They are quite nervous animals. So it means that they can move around. The public can see them, but they're not, you know, fully on show and they feel quite comfortable in this enclosure. The two boys have made huge progress. The difference in Brass and Evie from when they first arrived at the park is amazing. They're doing so much better. When they came, they were quite nervous, they were quite thin, underweight, and their fur was really patchy as well. But now they look amazing. Their fur looks great. It's silky and glossy and not patchy at all, and it's come through really thick. They've put on loads of weight. They're almost on the chubby side now, so we've dulled their diet down a little bit. And they seem really happy. They're happy to be around us. They don't like a lot of attention, but they're quite happy. So the change is really, really good to see. Like the Cheshire marmosets, sometimes primates have to be split up because relationships within the group break down. Recently, Capuchin Erico had to be removed from Winslow's group because he'd been having a few issues with the leader. It's thought he was responsible for Winslow's gash, which landed him in hospital. He's now joined Sean's group and has actually taken over as the boss. Capuchins are the cleverest of all small monkeys, and today, Jenny's putting out a challenge for them. Pomegranates may not look tricky to handle, but the monkeys have never had whole ones before. They'll need to use their brains and their sharp teeth to get into them. Jenny's making it as difficult as possible. Low-ranking Caesar is first out. But his buddy Phoebe spots an easy picking before he has a chance to grab one. Ringo has managed to sink his teeth into a pomegranate, but is easily defeated. It seems that the low rankers in the group are getting the first shout at the fruit, which is unusual. Erico, it appears, has his mind on more important matters. Zoe is in season, and he's keen to impress her. He tries to play it cool, but rushes after her in hot pursuit.
Eriko's dad, Archie, meanwhile, has his eyes firmly on the prize. While his son is chasing the ladies, he's going to tackle the hardest challenge of them all, the fruit in the hanging basket. But it's got the better of him. Marlowe's made his life much easier by picking one up from the floor. But old boy Archie isn't giving up without a fight. Capuchins have very nimble fingers, which allow them to easily grab hold of fruit like this. But how to get it out of the basket is the question. Beaten again, he spots one just below. Becky has now taken up the challenge, while Archie's perseverance has finally paid off. Back in the tunnel, Eriko is still trying to woo Zoe, but getting nowhere. However, Zoe's departure has left the way clear for Scarlet, who's also in season and has her sights set on Eriko. She tries hard to attract his attention, but he blanks her. Undeterred, the bold capuchin makes her move, but bottles it. It seems everyone has got what they want, apart from Scarlet. But she's tenacious and has noticed that Sean has joined Eriko in the tunnel. Surely her luck must be in now. Coming up, a friend at last for downtrodden Stumpy Phil. They are getting on really well and it's really nice to see. And the odd couple, Patas Monkey Mitsa and Lima George move in together. At Oaska's Woolly Monkey House, there's been a hive of activity because Zingu has had her baby. The newborn is just a few days old and seems to be thriving. The proud mum is taking it all in her stride and stepping up to the challenge. We've finally got our baby that we've been waiting for a very long time. Zingu has finally given birth. Both are doing fantastically well. Baby looks big and strong and mum looks big and strong as well, so it's all good. The team is being extra vigilant as Zingu lost her first baby due to a congenital abnormality. One of the first things we look for is that it's gripping on tightly to mum. Any sign of weakness is obviously a sign that there's a bit of a problem there because it really should be gripping on to mum very, very tightly indeed. And it's doing that, so we're happy about that. And then the next thing we start to look for is whether it's suckling. It's Dad Oaska's second child, and he seems delighted. Any baby woolly is a welcome addition, as they're seriously endangered in captivity. But Oaska's offspring are particularly important because he was wild caught, and he's therefore introducing a new and unrelated bloodline into the tiny captive population. Oscar is fantastic. He's always been a brilliant dad. We actually seen Oscar trying to play with it already. Uh, obviously, Zingu didn't allow that to happen, but he is sticking very close by to Zingu and the baby. He's making sure that both are okay. He keeps going over, having a little look, having a little sniff. Sometimes we've even seen him try to give it a little lick or a little snuffle. And yeah, very, very attentive and very protective. The team are keen to let Zingu do things her way so for the time being, are taking a step back. Meanwhile, at Lavar's house, another baby woolly who was rejected by his real mum seems to have found a foster mum. Kuna has taken Bueno Junior under her wing. It's great news for Junior, who had to be hand reared by the staff. He's only just joined the group full time. He climbs on her back as babies do with their mums, and she keeps an eye out for him. Kuna has surprised everyone with her maternal instincts. She's had three children herself, but they all had to be hand reared because she wouldn't feed them. Woolies learn a lot from their mums, so it's great that Junior finally has someone to look up to. And it means that with Kuna around, it's safe for Junior to go out into the big forested enclosure. 
This is a big deal for such a tiny woolly. He pops out his head for a nervous first peek. Kuna sidles past him, and then he has to dodge the others, who come thick and fast. It's all a bit daunting, so he stays put. Until he sees Paquita, who's a bit overbearing. He quickly scrambles out of the tunnel and hides at the bottom of the fence. When the coast is clear, he makes his way back into the safety of the tunnel. But watching everyone have fun outside tempts him to give it another go. However, he's too scared to venture any further. Kuna suddenly appears to reassure him, and he gratefully jumps on her back. With Kuna by his side, he braves it again. But he keeps his prehensile tail firmly wrapped around the hose, ready to dart back in when he loses his nerve. And now, Kuna's disappeared. Junior still has a lot to learn. And it's not easy without a full-time mom. The first few steps are always the most difficult. Next time, he'll no doubt take a few more. Although there have been plenty of babies recently, the park also has its fair share of oldies. Elderly Mitsa is now the only patas monkey at the park because her partner, Sissy Jo, recently passed away. The team were in a quandary about what to do, as they didn't want her to be on her own. So they started looking around for a potential housemate. Old boy Lima George had been living separately from the rest of the ringtails for a while because he didn't really get on with them. He's elderly and couldn't be bothered with their antics. The keepers moved him into his own house next door, so he could still see the others, but was left alone. After a lot of thought, the team decided to pair them up and have moved George into Mitsa's enclosure. It was a gamble because they are a rather unusual couple. Lemurs come from Madagascar and patas monkeys from Africa, but it does seem to be working. Mitsa loves grooming George and follows him around. George doesn't exactly reciprocate, but he does appear to enjoy Mitsa's company and her grooming skills. Patas monkeys are the fastest primates on land, reaching speeds of up to 55 kilometers per hour. You wouldn't guess that from watching Mitsa, though, who's taking life at a much more relaxed pace these days. They're certainly the odd couple, but it's great that they both have company in their twilight years. Mitsa has a much easier time with George than she did with her previous partner, Sissy Jo, who used to constantly tell her off. And George, well, he's probably grateful he's no longer being hounded by the younger ringtails. At the stumpy enclosure, there's a big loving going on. The ugly monkeys, as they're affectionately known here, are having a mass grooming session. Grooming is an essential part of macaque behavior and very popular in this group. It's really important for these guys, like with a lot of primates, to spend time grooming. It forms friendships, it strengthens bonds. So they do spend a lot of time doing that and obviously keeps their skin nice. Um, they'll pick off any scabs and things like that. But there is one noticeable absence. Newcomer Flo is feeling a bit peckish, so has gone in search of some sustenance. Flo recently arrived from the German city of Munich, where she was living in an animal shelter. Unfortunately, her partner died, and the staff there didn't want her to be on her own, so asked Monkey World to give her a home. Flo is a normal weight for a stumpy, but the other macaques are on the heavy side as they were rescued from laboratories where they were used for research and kept in very small cages where they didn't get enough exercise. 
This has caused a problem for the keepers, as they have to be careful not to overfeed them, but at the same time give Flo enough to sustain her weight. So they sneakily give her extras while the others aren't looking. If they saw us feeding Flo, they wouldn't be best pleased about it because they would want everything that she was getting. So we just have to take the opportunity when they're not watching what's going on, then we can come down here. And Flo does like hanging out down at the bottom of the enclosure, so it's quite nice to take the opportunity at that point to give her some, some extra nice food. And the other guys don't realise she's having it, so they're not bothered. Stumpies have a strict hierarchy and aren't known for being particularly friendly. So Flo has had her work cut out to be accepted in this group. But she's wisely started at the bottom and has befriended lowly Phil first, who can't believe his luck. Once the others retire inside, the two meet for a secret grooming session. It is really nice to see Phil and Flo together. Flo lost her partner when she was living in Germany, so it's coming over here. And it has taken a few months for her to get up the confidence to groom someone else, and she really did have to make that first step. She has only lived with one other stump town macaque her whole life, so to meet these guys, it was a big ask for her, really, and she's done amazingly well. Bill is a very low-ranking male in this group, probably the, now the lowest. And he did lose Paddy not so long ago, so it is nice for him to have a, a friendship as well. So they are getting on really well, and it's really nice to see. Next time on Monkey Life, a heartbreaking decision for the team when Bart's mum Susie is taken to the hospital. It looks to me as if she may have a heart problem. And the keepers take over the care of baby Bulu.